so yeah, thank you guys. I know it's the first week back, um, so this is a bit funny timing, but luckily we're recording things anyway. So anyone that um, isn't able to make it live, you will be watching this um, in your own time, whenever you like. Um, people are probably busy getting COVID swabs and arriving back on site for the first time now. Um, but thank you for those who are able to come along live. And for anyone that's watching um, in your own time uh, after the session, thank you for, thank you for coming to watch. Um, this is our first, um, well, actually, technically our second. So, so our second kind of industry insight step up to HC Masterclass, where we have um, someone to come and speak to us about the industry they work in. Um, it's our first of HE week. So this week is HE week, which is a week which is all about stepping up to higher education and potential career routes and education routes for you to take. Um, and this is the first event of the week. So so um, welcome to HE week, basically. There's lots more on this week, and I'm sure you've all seen um, the various emails going out with other events. We've got drop-in sessions every lunchtime. We've got three or four more industry insights throughout the week. We have a couple of parents' evenings as well. Um, there's a quiz you can do and, and the quiz, you do the quiz, you've got a chance of winning a £50 Amazon voucher. So that's um, you know, worth it alone for that. And the quiz only takes about five minutes. So definitely worth it for a chance of winning a £50 Amazon voucher. So look out for that. Um, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you um, a little bit about um, kind of why we're doing this. And then we're going to hand over to James Pyro, who has many years working in the music and events industry in various jobs and roles, which are um, I'm sure he will tell you about. Um, and we're going to come back to do a bit of questions. So, you know, if you have any questions, you're going to ask James about his career, about the music industry, about the future of the industry, about the events industry, about what it's like um, working in marketing or any of the things he does. Um, you can type them in the chat bar when the questions come and we can feed them to James. Or if you have any questions for me and my team, um, you can have questions for us as well. Um, so, plan for today. The music and events sector. Um, so why enter the music and events sector? Um, what are your options after college and how can we take you to the next step? So we're going to show you a little bit about the courses available at just the college group as well. Um, so music and events sector is huge. Um, it's worth 42.3 billion pounds a year to the UK economy, which, which is massive. Um, and then over the last year, we've seen that sector have to shut down and really reinvent itself to keep going. But it's about to kind of boom again. And I'll show you a little news article that shows that it's about to boom again as, um, as the world or as the country opens up. Um, so music tourists. Um, I've never heard this phrase music tourists before I looked at it today. Um, music tourists are people who travel to attend events. So that could be someone that comes from outside of the UK to the UK to attend a music event, um, or someone that's just traveling elsewhere. You know, So if I travel from where I live in Brighton to London to go to an event, I am at that point a music tourist. Um, and they spend alone 4.7 billion pounds a year. Um, and that's not just on the tickets themselves. You know, Perhaps if I want to travel to London to go to a gig or an event, I'm going to go um, buy some food when I'm there, or I'm going to go to Greg's and buy a sausage roll, you know, it's all those extra expenditures as well. Um, and then what, what you guys would be interested as people, you know, might be interested in working in this sector in the future, there are 190,000 jobs in the music and events industry. That's a hell of a lot of jobs. Um, and I'll show you in a minute the kind of varying different things you can do. And I'm sure James will give you a bit of an insight into that as well. Um, so it's just a couple of articles. Um, you know, we as British people, we love events, we love doing things, and I think, you know, as we'll see this year, uh, when the world and the country opens up again, um, all these events will, you know, will sell out very quickly. So that's an article from a couple of years ago on Glastonbury Festival tickets sell out in 34 minutes. Um, and this article on the right um, is about how, you know, there's a surge in bookings for the end of um, end of COVID. So this announcement that in a few months' time we're going to be opening up and we can have events again. This one's actually about it says got a picture of a wedding here but people you know they're desperate to have events people really love getting together and doing these things so I think we're going to see a big boom and a return to this sector in the coming months um so you know you know what can you do there's so many different jobs in this industry it's not just um event management or artist booking or you know but the list goes on really so here's you, know, you could be a booking agent you could be 
a live sound engineer. You could be an electrician at events. You could be an event promoter, um, studio sound engineer, artist booking. And I think James has done a bit of that in his time as he has done marketing, um, sales, content producer, event technician, PR officer, site management, stage management, event manager. And there's, there's tons more. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert on this industry at all. I just put together a few job titles I could think of. But knowing the variety of courses that you guys probably do at Chichester College Group, um, there are so many different jobs in this industry that you can go into. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about our courses later after we've spoken to James. Um, so now what I'm going to do is actually just hand it over to James. Um, I'm going to stop presenting my screen so you can see him as he speaks. So, hi everyone. I'm currently the head of marketing for the Wireless Project and Parklife Festival in Manchester, and have been doing that now since around 2016. And uh, to get to this point, it's kind of there is a bit of a backstory, I guess, as there kind of would be for anyone in their career. And uh, I think it kind of began very much at a local level, and uh, that was around when I was in school, just doing bands and stuff, and like we're in various bands and we'd be playing gigs kind of like every other weekend. And it very much got me the bug that was like, do I just want to be playing guitar all the time or would I rather be the one kind of booking the bands or kind of deciding when these gigs should go on, how much the ticket price should be, uh, how many tickets can we sell, what should the poster look like? How can we uh, make it look as good as possible? And uh, it kind of that kind of got my head thinking, like, what more should I be doing? And through that, the band stuff was still going on in the background, and it kind of gave me the opportunity to play in a number of different venues. So we kind of did stuff in Hertfordshire, London, loads of gigs in London, and then we did some gigs up around like Manchester, Liverpool, Brighton, uh, Leeds, anywhere. And uh, it kind of meant that you kind of see all these different venues and how they operate. And you kind of see how different promoters and booking agents book bands and they kind of sell the events. And it kind of really got me thinking like, this is an industry that is super interesting. And although I was only doing one sort of music in it at the time, which was kind of live music, indie music I guess uh, it kind of definitely set off a bit of a interest in what more you can do and I guess that was definitely at the college kind of sixth form level that age group I was at, at the time and uh, at that age you're kind of thinking like what should I do at uni if I want to go to uni and uh, to be honest when I was 17 16 17 18 I had no one older than me that was telling me kind of what to do uh, my teacher wasn't amazing. He he didn't really tell me where where you should go if you want to do this kind of thing. He didn't really understand, and it kind of just meant that I was looking on the internet, and I got quite hooked with the idea of going to Liverpool uh, to maybe do a music degree of some sort. And uh, I applied for Liverpool, Portsmouth, uh, all these different cities that I thought had like a good music scene, and London, and. Uh, through my BTEC, which was a BTEC music uh, and history level, managed to get into uni and I chose Liverpool University basically because I kind of thought that has one of the best music scenes in my opinion at the time and uh, there was a lot going on and some friends from school wanted to go there as well. So it all kind of worked out really well that that was where I wanted to go. However, I was there for about four weeks and I kind of was doing this music degree at Uni Liverpool and I felt that the degree itself wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. It was kind of focusing a lot on like classical music and kind of the theory of music and it kind of, my head kind of went back to the fact that at those gigs I wanted to know how they were all running and I wanted to know more about that. I felt like my degree was more about the theory and not about the actual management side of things and it kind of got me a bit down in the end however in Liverpool there's loads of unis and uh, loads of opportunities and there's a, there a uni there that Paul McCartney ran called the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts and they had a specialised degree around music, theatre and entertainment management and uh, 
loads of good kind of people in the music industry from booking agents to sound engineers to actors to musicians uh, and anything in between people that run theatres and film films they've all been to this uni and uh, did various degrees there there's only about 750 people that go to it and I kind of got in touch with them and I said I think I've made a mistake here. I don't want to be going to Liverpool University. I want to go to your university because I want to learn how to do everything that you guys do. And uh, I was very lucky because of the fact that I actually got through into that uni through clearing anyway. I just turned it down at the last minute because I had already sorted out Uni Liverpool and they let me join, which was incredible. So here I am at uni, another new uni, and uh, we kind of get, we're kind of in the middle of it and you're having now dedicated lessons to all the different aspects of the music industry or the theatre industry, such as law. You're learning a bit about law, maybe like one lesson a week. You're learning about promotion and all the different kind of techniques that come into marketing and event. You're learning even about shooting a video. So we, we shot a few videos that you need and then kind of the stuff that I was really interested in, which was like how you run an event and how you kind of go about booking bands and how you go about booking the lighting engineers and booking everything you need for an event. So it could be security, it could be uh, the people on the door that are kind of getting people in and the bar, for example. And so we're learning all about that stuff. And I quickly specialised in that kind of thing. So at uni, like that, which is very much a vocational uni, where you're going there to learn about getting into the industry, it's super important that you find maybe like internships or low paid jobs and stuff that can kind of get you into the venues around the city or whatever you want to do. So what I ended up doing was I'd be doing like my degree, but then every night I could, I'd be working on a door at a gig, getting like maybe like £20 a night, or I'd be working at like this local festival where I basically volunteered my time for free, which uh, I don't recommend all the time. But if you can afford it when you've got like student loan, then go for it. And I'd be working there, kind of like working underneath the marketing manager and the production manager, learning how this festival was getting ran. And you're kind of in the middle of this kind of like mad ecosystem of you've got sponsorship people there, you've got people running. There's a, we did a conference, so getting in like business leaders then that work in the music industry. And you kind of just, uh, through being in that environment, you just suck it all in, you learn. And I was... I was very nervous. I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing. But at the same time, I, if you have someone above you, that's quite nice, as I did. They kind of just noticed I was nervous. We're trying to like, involve me in all the conversations that were going on. And it ended up being like a really good experience. So I ended up doing that for about a year and a half at uni, maybe two years. Yeah, I think two years. And uh, through that opportunity, because it was quite a grassroots kind of festival, people are coming in and out of the company all the time and it kind of led to a few opportunities for me where they had a festival in New York and they had no one to manage booking in all the band's equipment or the microphones and the sound engineers and that job is called like a production coordinator so you're you're coordinating all the production at this venue for that festival so they basically just told me like James we don't have anyone to do anything here can you just sort it out and I'm like 19 years old, just looking at them like, yeah, I'll give it a go, go on then. I can probably do it. And I'm just basically Googling uh, drum hire. I'm Googling guitar hire and create, creating spreadsheets for the first time and all this stuff. And because the guy above me kind of knew what he was doing, I'd just be like, is this right? He'd be like, yeah, sound. And in the very like Liverpool way, they just kind of let you get on with it. And... Uh, it all worked out. The festival went really well. I didn't get to go to New York, but whatever. I don't. I'm over it. And uh, that kind of put like my first kind of big thing on my CV. And uh, through that, you then at a university like that, you get told you have to do a six month placement. And that's where you can either email hundreds of people and just be like, "I've got a six month placement for my university degree. Can I come and work for you?" And if you're lucky, you'll get a reply quite quickly. Or in my case, didn't really get a reply very soon. And they ended up thinking like, oh, my God, what am I going to do here? And uh, 
I ended up finding like a company in Liverpool called Ditto Music who upload music to Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. So every time you're playing like Skepta or Stormzy or Lewis Capaldi or something like that, we would accompany that with upload that music to the website. So we kind of deal with the managers and PR and stuff, pushing all that through. And I was working there for six months for the placement, basically just go in every day and you get used to like an office environment and it's very much a great way of learning how business works especially if you want to get into like the music industry which I did at the time and uh, whilst I was doing that I had decided that this was all very digital led and I still wanted to do events so between me and friends at uni we had about four key people we started a music management company called Know Your Culture Management and we would be putting on events in Liverpool every other week, booking bands and using everything we'd learned from uni, from my work at the Sound City Festival and then more of the management side of the admin stuff, working for this like placement stuff and uh, I would be using that experience to put on our events around the city and we'd be selling out like every other week, it was great and we were managing a few bands trying to get them on like Beeps Introducing and Radio 1 and shooting music videos for them. And it's kind of just like when you're in that environment, it's very, you just kind of just get super stuck into it and it all just adds to the experience. And it was, it was super fun at the time. And do not regret any of it. And it didn't leave much time to really have much of your own time, but because it's when you really want to do, it's kind of like you're happy to do it, which is great. And it just kind of kept building and building and building. I got offered a full-time job at Ditto Music once the placement had finished. And so I'd be still uploading music to the streaming platforms. And then through that, they let me have a go at like PR, kind of like assisting the PR manager. So I'd learn how they kind of like package press releases for bands that would pay the company money to try and get them press. And... My band was still going on, so we're still touring and doing stuff in UK and Europe. And it kind of just, you get to see all these different festivals and stuff, and I definitely got the bug for it. And once you, I was writing my dissertation for my degree, which was around, I got really techie, and I decided I was going to write around big data, which is basically how record labels were using data to decide who the next big acts were going to be. So that could be Spotify data, it could be like Shazam data, could be social media. And I just kind of got really into it. And I badgered people in the music industry being like, can I interview for my dissertation? And managed to interview someone, CEO of Sony Music, CEO who signed like Alt-J and Temper Trap and various other people. And through writing that, and that experience for everything I was doing before that, I was like, once I finish uni, I want to use everything I've done now in Liverpool and move it to London. And my housemate and I ran a management company together, so we kind of had the same ideas. So we would basically, every night, we'd scroll through Facebook, go on bands and accounts and look at the info bit of the band section and you'd find like an email for the manager or a booking agent or like a record label you'd find an info at email and we'd write we must have written about 150 emails in about a two or three week period trying to find the internships or jobs when we finished uni and with that you're not going to get many replies but you do get some and my friend Cal he managed to get a job at a ticketing company which had just started called Dice Tickets and he was like one of the first people they employed as an assistant mm -hmm. and I managed to get an internship with the girl that managed a band called Foles, Peace and Declan McKenna which was great. Uh, she kind of replied to me straight away as soon as anyone said I need an intern we've got an album coming out at the end of summer and uh, I need an extra pair of hands. So I was like, thank God for that. <laughs> it was kind of like Falls at the time, my favourite band, and we got on really well. And I got to kind of work in like an office environment where you're looking after like 
the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I think they looked after Muse, Snow Patrol, Duffy, and other people. And you kind of just sat in there and you, once again, it was like being back at the festival in Liverpool. You're in there, you're at the bottom of the ladder, but you're just kind of listening to everything they're saying. And it was, it was great. You kind of, you learn loads. But once again, like Sound City, I found I wasn't very confident and I definitely was nervous all the time. And I, I'd kind of, all the confidence I'd grown in Liverpool, I kind of lost in London because I didn't really, I was still very new to me. I'd only done events up to that point. So working like a management company was brand new. And I think they realised I was nervous and like I didn't really speak up enough. And because of that, it kind of, it kind of led to us doing the campaign and there wasn't really a job after it. So I was kind of got to like the end of summer after being touring around like Reading and Leeds. We did, I think we did Glastonbury, we did a tour with Peace, which was amazing. And all this false campaign shoot music videos and stuff. And I basically got to the end of that. There was no job. And I had a great thing on my CV again. So I was able to use it to start a, to basically what did I do? Uh, I basically went and got a job working for an events company and we who were based in London and they did events for Foles and stuff and they put on gigs at like go to arena, they do stuff at much smaller venues and do a lot of indie stuff. And that was much more suited to, suited to me and uh, we got on much better and I got kind of like my confidence back. I knew what I was doing. And since then I've kind of stayed in my lane. That is I love events. I love doing the marketing, and I've got and I've had the opportunity to use what I learned for everything. And one of the main things I learned was stop being nervous. They want to hear your ideas. They wouldn't have got you in there if they don't want to hear your ideas. So now, especially in Manchester where I work now for the wireless projects, it's like you just got to speak up and uh, stop thinking that they don't want to hear your ideas. Uh, where should I go? Basically, Warehouse Projects came about through a few months working for another festival in London called Far Festival, which was an electronic music festival in the woods. Me and my friends had gone to it since I was about 18. So at the age of 21, I knew the festival really well. And uh, I'd been doing some events back in Hertfordshire where I lived, my parents, and they went really well, putting on bands in pubs and stuff. Uh, quite basic stuff but at the same time it was selling tickets and people loved it and uh, we got a, I got a meeting with the director of that festival because he lived in the same town as me and he, he thought it was cool and he said right well you can work for me three days a week if you want and we did a whole campaign for FAR which was probably my favourite festival at the time in 2016 and uh, I was doing the ticketing I basically did everything. You, I was doing ticketing, I was booking the bands, I was booking the toilets, I was booking the lights. Uh, and you kind of just get stuck in doing everything with a small festival like that. So it was an independent festival, 5,000 people went to it every summer and uh, got on really well with the whole team. There's only three of us. And through that, we had a really successful campaign. We sold it out. And then after the festival had finished, some guy at the Warehouse Project emailed me saying, we've got a job if you want it, assisting on running a ticketing for the company, because I know that's what you've done for Far Festival. And I said, sounds super interesting, but how would it work? I'm based in London. He said, well, you'll have to move up to Manchester uh, next week if you want to do it. And I just thought like, Ah, what do I do? So I basically just thought, screw it, I'm going to do it. And I told uh, my friend, who who was now my friend, the director of that independent festival, I just said to him, like, this opportunity doesn't come around very often. What do you think I should do? And he said, just go and do it. So the next week I had moved to Manchester, where I am right now, and uh, since then have kind of been working on the Wireless Project, which is the biggest... Uh, electronic music kind of seasoned in the whole of UK, Europe, I think the world. And we do around 10,000 tickets per event from 
every Friday and Saturday from September to January the 1st. Uh, we book people from like the Chemical Brothers to Disclosure to, I think we did Diplo last year. And like, we, we do basically book anyone in the electronic music world. But then we also do Park Life in June, which is the biggest metropolitan festival, which is an, which means non camping in the UK, which is around 80,000 people per day. And with that, we've had like Frank Ocean, uh, Tyler Creator, Lewis Capaldi, and all the big DJs like Cole Cox as well. And I guess with that, my job now entails heading up the marketing campaigns for all these events. We have a team of about four or five here. We have another head of marketing who works with me called Ollie. Uh, we have two assistants, we have one intern, and then we have a graphic designer that works in-house as well. And it's just basically coming up with different concepts all the time for our events and how we're going to sell them out. Are we going to use Instagram more heavily? Do we want to create like a viral moment? And now there's also new stuff like TikTok coming through and we're kind of thinking like, how do we get onto that? I feel like, am I too old for TikTok? Probably. But at the same time, you've got to, you've got to get stuck into all the new emerging technologies and you've got to understand that our audience in two years' time are going to be there who are age 16, 17 now. When they start coming to the warehouse project, they're going to live on Snapchat and TikTok. How do we kind of keep up with that? So it's always kind of like an evolution every year. And I've really enjoyed the fact that we get to get new people through the door every year and it's never – no day is ever the same, uh, as I'm sure I know Ali quite well, and I know uh, he's seen me. And every time we go for a beer or if we go for a meal, I'm normally on my phone doing work, but that's just how it is. <laughs> but yeah, it'd be great to hear some questions. I've kind of blabbered on for ages now. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, James. So what we're going to do is I, I've got a couple of questions or, or things I'd like to ask myself. Um, whilst you know i'm doing that um guys if you could please type your questions um in the chat bar so you've got the little conversation button at the top of the screen and you can just type questions in the chat bar um and one of us is going to you know read that out to james there could be questions for james about the industry or questions for 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 any of us at Chichester college as well um a couple of the things that i kind of would love you to speak a little bit more about james is you um you, you know, talked, you know, what, what I found so fascinating is that you've done so many different things to get to where you are now. And I think some of our students might find that interesting because they probably don't realise that, you know, there's no set path you have no. to follow. It's not like I want to do this or I have to do this for the rest of time. It seems that you've done, you know, loads of different things to get to where you are now. Um, do, what, what I want to kind of ask is, was your plan always to be doing what you're doing at the moment? Um, because, you know, it sounds like, you know, you're involved in running festivals, you running your own things, you're involving marketing, artist booking, the data side of things as well. And that's a whole thing. I didn't mm. mention that at the beginning, that, that data and kind of mathsy jobs are a big part of this as well. Um, was your plan, I want to be here working for this festival in five years time, or have you just fallen into things? Really good question. I've, I always, I never had a plan. It's kind of, I always wanted to work in this industry, be it the music industry. And like when I was in uni, I wanted to work for a record label. I didn't really want to work in events. And uh, the opportunity just, there are loads of opportunities to work in record labels. And like there are internship schemes and stuff and uh, entry level jobs that you can find through various websites. I can send to Ali after this if you like. And, uh, but, I never seemed to be able to get into them. And, uh, but what I was always really good at was events and marketing. And it kind of just meant that I kind of stayed and growing in that world instead. So it's only recently really that I've ever kind of come up with a bit of a plan about what I want to do. But when I was kind of 18 to 22, there was no plan. It was kind of just like, I like gigs. I want to work, for, I want to do gigs. And do you know what I mean? I like, I like visual art, I like uh, kind of conversation, I like marketing. And it's kind of like how can you tie all, tie all these kind of different things together. And uh, like one thing, when we were in uni, we had people speak to us like we are now. And we'd do like a, a master, master class every 
month or so. And one guy came in from Ticketmaster, which is like the biggest kind of ticketing agency in the world. Uh, he came in and did a talk on how he got to where he is. And he said that one of the biggest pieces of advice he'd give us was just be nice to people because you never know when you'll work with them again. And he said, I now work with heads of festivals that were my friends when I was like 20, 21, just starting out. And if we'd kind of like fallen out at that age, we wouldn't be working together now. Uh, so I've definitely tried to be nice to people and kind of keep it keep it civil because it can be quite a brutal industry as well. People can be quite money focused and stuff like that. But the ones that are nice seem to always be the best, I think. Mm, that sounds like pretty good advice to, for any kind of industry or, or work you're going to or, or just life in general. Just be nice to people because they might come back to bite you. The music um, industry in particular, though, because it's such a small industry. Everyone knows everyone. Like, I, I, I literally think it's probably one of the smaller industries to get into, even though you said there's 190,000 jobs. Uh, I seem to work with the same people every year. <laughs> mm, that's really interesting. Um, you, I've, we've got a question in the chat bar from Ashley here that I'm going to read out. Um, so it sounds like your job involves loads of business and marketing skills. Um, how important for you was it to do a specialist music and events degree versus a more general business degree? Or do you think broader business courses would have been more useful? Amazing question. Uh, I think uh, with, with Lipper, it is a where I went in Liverpool, it is a music management degree. So you do get to learn about the business side of things more than maybe you would at another degree that's similar because all the lecturers have worked in the industry and they kind of come from that background. But I do think I've come out of this. So I think like well, I'd like to do a master's in kind of like project management or kind of like business development and stuff like that because I definitely feel like there's a lot more I could learn in that regard so yeah I think uh, it's important to do the degree if you know kind of more what you want to do if it's a vocational thing but at the same time there's a lot more apprenticeships now than there were when I started like record labels are much more open to it Spotify do them uh, and there's a lot definitely a lot more opportunities where you don't have to go down to uni like that. I've got friends that have just come straight out of school and sick form in college and have found like an entry-level job at like a music focused to thing and they've done really well for themselves but then yeah. if you don't know what you want to do which I didn't know what I wanted to do at the time I just thought it's better to go to uni and figure it out what I was there. That's that's really interesting it sounds like there's loads of routes into that industry and I think it's quite reassuring I, I don't know how the students in this uh, meeting will feel but I know it's quite reassuring to hear that you don't need to have a plan and that you can do what you like and then figure it out as you go along. Mm. Um, I've got you know, a couple more things I'd like like to ask as well. Um, how do you see it's quite a broad question but you know, how do you see the industry changing so this is you know, you've been in it for five or six years now and then these students you know they're 16 now they might be your age in 10 years time or however old you are um you know how do you see that the the world of music and events changing over the next 10 years uh, i think it's going to be a lot more digital like there's uh, it's really good to learn about i think one thing that's given it is going to be more digital so it's worth to learn about content production and if you want to get a job in a label or like an events company they're always looking for people that are really amazing at kind of creating visual assets like photoshop videos motion graphics and although that isn't maybe you don't want to be a graphic designer but if you can do like the simple stuff or if you know how to code a little bit like html then it's super helpful. I didn't get an internship once at a label when I first started because I didn't know anything about HTML. I do now. I did like a beginner's course on it and it's helped big time because all these companies, when they want new blood, they want the new blood to be as up to date as possible and they can do the stuff that the oldies don't know how to do, like myself now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think just keep on top of trends as much as possible because that's what the people that are employing people want to know about because they don't know about it yeah yeah, yeah. And, and you joked about you know 
not being cleaned up on TikTok. And, and I think there's going to be someone 10 years younger than you that knows how to use TikTok or what's on TikTok that's kind of a bit ahead of the game. So being kind of young and knowing what young people are about definitely gives you a bit of an advantage in that regard. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay, great question from Ashley. Yeah. Who's the most famous person you've taken a selfie with? Now, James, I've known you for many years and I've never seen a famous selfie. So I'm, I'm surprised there's not more floating around. But, but is that an answer to this question? <laughs> That's such a funny question. Uh, oh, Sam Smith in Austin, Texas, maybe. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was more like a joke because he'd just come off stage and we just thought it'd be funny to get a photo with him. Uh, I don't really like going up to people and asking for selfies because I feel a bit awkward. But <laughs> uh, the, the, I got one with Corrupt FM. That was quite funny when I was really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam Smith and Corrupt FM is good enough. But what what we're going to do is I've got a bit more things I need to chat about. Um, but James, if you could hold on, um, just as in stay in the meeting. And if anyone's got any more questions, type them and we'll come back to uh, James in a moment. But I've got a little bit more of my presentation to do. Um, cool. And then, um, OK, we'll have one more question from you. Most interesting rider. And for people that don't know, a rider, James, correct me if I'm getting this definition right. Rider is what uh, people who are art, say an artist has been booked to perform they ask for things in their dressing room so you know like food drinks etc um they'll have a certain list of things they ask to be provided for them when they're performing um so, yeah. so james you know nothing explicit but but what's the most interesting rider that you, yeah. you've you've heard of or, or had to provide for yeah definitely want to say anything explicit uh we when i was uh first starting out let's say 2013 so i would have been in second year uni or it would have been the first summer of uni i think and uh, I was working at Field Day Festival in London as a, I think, I don't think I was getting paid. I think I was just doing it to get a ticket. And uh, I was setting up the riders for like Solange and uh, all the bands. And so like, it was all quite basic stuff. But now at Park Life, which is a much bigger festival, there was one rider request that said, I'm not going to say who it was, but they, uh, they, want, they said, we're not going to walk on grass. So do not if there's any grass around the dressing room get rid of it oh my god <laughs> he didn't want to get his trainers dirty <laughs> oh my lord that that's real kind of princess behavior not wanting to touch grass all, all right what, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to reshare my screen and guys if you've got any more questions type them in the chat bar and we'll try and revisit them just before we finish um but i'm going to reshare my screen for a little bit um um so yeah this week obviously is all about he um and higher education and James talked a little bit about the different you know things you can do you have there's a lot more on offer now than there was back then you know apprenticeships internships um and he, he did you know um, actually James what, what was the degree you studied what was what degree did you study music theatre and entertainment management degree at Lipa I can put the link in the chat if you like oh yes yes please do um, so yeah, that's what James did, and he mentioned that he ended up switching, you know, to that when he first started his first degree, switching to that and switching to that that course. So I think, again, going back to that point, but like you're free to change your mind and, and you know change what you want to do. I mean, it's never too late to decide you want to do a different course, move into something else. Um, but I, I'm hoping a lot of you have seen this fly before. It kind of outlines the levels um, of education. So you know, HE is level four and above. Um, you know, many of you in this course. Um, I've, I've no idea actually. Some of you might be on level one courses, level two, three, four, etc. Um, but this is the route up um, into different courses. And HE is level four and above. And we're going to be doing a lot of promotion of HE courses uh, this week. And Chichester College has a lot of HE courses. Um, so why did you study HE? You know, and James just has just told us about his absolutely fascinating career, um, all the different things he's done since he left college or left school um, to go to university many years ago. Um, you've done, you know, a, whole, a huge wealth of things. So in terms of improving your employment prospects, that's massive. Um, you know, increasing your knowledge in a certain area. Um, you know, for James, it was about music and events management. Um, for you, it might be something different or it might be something along the same lines. In this industry, it could be a whole wealth of things. You know, it could be maybe as someone here who's studying music production and you want to, you know, get more into music production or maybe there's someone that's doing theatre and dance and wants to, you know, improve their practical skills in that or, Maybe it's marketing, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. Um, develop essential life skills. You know, it's not just about, um, you know, what you're learning. It's kind of essential skills in studying, working hard, 
time management organisation that, that are going to be useful for for life generally. Um, and getting qualifications, you know, when you're going for jobs, when you're going on to what you're doing next, um, having a qualification really puts you in a good stead um, to go on to the next thing. And enjoyment, it's fun. You know, I, I've never, you know, it sounds silly saying, you know, but I've never learned something that I've not enjoyed learning, right, right from when I was in school to when I was doing HE courses in a university. So I, I think it's, um, you know, learning these things are fun, especially when, when you're at your age or when, you know, we were at college and beyond and you're choosing something you, you were doing it because you want to do it and you enjoy doing it. And HE is very fun. Um, I'll just talk really briefly on student finance. Um, I think people are often put off studying, put off HE courses, put off university by um, the cost. Um, the really big thing to get across here, if you're thinking, you know, you're hearing about James going to university in Liverpool and thinking, oh, I couldn't afford that. Um, you get loans, you get support. There's plenty of support out there. Um, so your tuition fees are paid for by a student loan. Um, and your you get a maintenance loan as well. You know, James mentioned, you know, using a student loan and kind of earning kind of low paid jobs. Um, you do get support with uh, your living costs. So you'll get a maintenance loan and this varies depending on where you are. Um, if you're living at home, it can be up to 7,747 a year. Um, if you're living away from home, it can be up to 9,203 a year, depending on where in the country you are and your household income and a variety of factors. But the main point I want to get across here is you should never be put off by, oh, things are too expensive because there's loads of support out there. Um, and as well as this support, there are different grants and bursaries, additional money you can get um, depending on a variety of factors. So there's loads of um, funding support out there for you to go into HE courses. Um, and the only payback is when you can afford to. You know, those of us like, like myself and, and James and you know, Ashley who went to university many years ago, you know, we're, we're probably only paying back like five pounds a month from our, our measly salaries <laughs> into, the, into these uh, uh, loan pots. So um, don't think of it as, you know, a big amount of debt. You only really pay it back much later because you shouldn't really worry about it like that. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail on this, um, but you can, you know, we can follow this up in more detail um, if you want to look this up after the sessions, because I know we're a bit limited on time. Um, so this talks a little bit about how you only pay back a certain percentage um, above a certain amount of salary earnings. If you just look in the bottom right hand there, um, here you've got a graduate earning £29,000 um, and they're only paying back £22 a month um, for their student loan. Uh, but I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's quite complicated. Um, main point is you don't pay back that much. So don't never be put off of studying HE because of student finance. Um, a few places to go to for more support. Uh, prospects.ac.uk and, and we'll put, put some links in the chat and send some links around after this to the attendees of uh, places to look at different HE courses and university courses that are available um, and obviously we've got the HE courses at Chichester College Group um, so there's loads of courses here um, so there's art you know loads of art design and media courses um, which is you know quite related to the stuff James was talking about there is um, animal care and management, business and management, and other things quite related to what James was talking about. Um, computing, construction, education, engineering, technology, food production, horticulture, hospitality, travel and tourism, performance and dance and sport. Um, and you can look on the Chichester College website and there is a, a big PDF prospectus um, that tells you about all the courses that are available here at the group. Um, and as I'm hoping you're all aware, you can all go to the Progression Plus Centre and chat there about your options as well, or even speak to your tutors as well. Um, what next? So, you know, you can apply to Chichester College Group's HE courses via UCAS. You can speak to us at Progression Plus. You can speak to us, you know, here. Um, there's an email there, he at chichester.ac.uk. And you've also got our college websites. Um, so do, you know, do have a look at these things afterwards. If you've kind of heard about all the weird and fascinating things James has done and think, oh, well, how did he get into that? Um, and that's inspired you to think about what you want to do next. You can look at some of the courses that are available. If anyone does want any more information, you just pass up my email if you want. I don't mind speaking to anyone. Yes, that's great. You know, I think we'll have loads of people who, yeah, might want to rack your brains, might want to get into that industry. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions after this, and for those of you that are watching this recorded, um, we will send back. You've got our contact details, so you can contact us and speak to James. If you have any questions as well so um you know if you have questions you want to ask if you weren't in the session 
but you've got stuff you want to ask, want to speak to us about, um, do feel free to get in touch. Uh, Leanne, you've, you've, you've raised your hand. Can I just give a plug to the HE Week? I've just popped a link into the chat box. So um, there's lots and lots of resources on CCG online, things to do with courses, things to do with finance, how to apply. And there's also a really good competition. I'm not sure if uh, the guys have mentioned it already, but you've got a chance of winning a £50 Amazon voucher. Um, but if, yes, yeah, so if you click on the link, it will take you to the CCG page where there's loads of resources. Cool. Thank you so much, Leanne. Um, I think that's everything from us um if anyone's got anything more to say please do say it but i think that really is everything so james thank you so much for that um thank you to everyone that attended and asked questions um and thanks to anyone that is um watching this recorded um please do contact us um and if you want to get james's contact details uh contact us to ask for those as well if you want to rack his brains about his uh exciting career um but that's pretty much everything everyone thank you for coming and please do check out the rest of the he week stuff we hope to see you in um our events for the rest of the week really <laughs>